prompted you to get into this line of business? I used to do fine art in high school and I was very good at graphic design. And it was interesting coming up with ways of, of <laughs> creating an ad that actually attracts people and that makes people buy. But we had a very bad art teacher and she'd keep telling me, you'll never make it. Just forget about art. <laughs> Go. So I, I didn't do so well in art, and but what is weird? I was called to do fine art at JKU. At but my mom pushed me to do to go to Strathmore to do where I did accounting, which I've never used. But accounting made me get jobs. So I got a job at uh, my first job was with a company called Ribbon Revival. I was just an admin assistant. I moved from there. I went to G4S, where I was also an admin assistant. Then I moved to HR. Then I left, I went to Safaricom where I did customer service. So it's, it's, all, it's just a roller coaster, you're just moving from one job to the next. So then it was all about making money and getting the right job. So from Safaricom, I went to G4S again, where I worked as an ATM custodian. That's the point where I got tired. I decided to start my hand in, try my hand in business. So I, I got into selling of, um, first, I sold French beans to, I exported French beans to like England, France, then I got corn, <laughs> and then that just went sore, then I started selling strawberries, then what happened, strawberries went out of season, so there's no business for a while, so I decided to get a job again. I got a job with a company called FSI Capital, their microfinance where I was the marketing manager. Uh, all this time, I had a lot of interest in advertising, and I have someone I really look up to. He's dead, though. He's called David Oglivy of Oglivy and Martha, the founder of Oglivy and Martha. I adore the guy totally. So I just used to read his books. I have a couple of things he's written on paper and all that. So the interest was there. It's just that I used to do it now as a hobby. I never used to do it for money. And as a marketing manager, I used to meet a lot of companies and I just do it, just let me do it, your, your marketing communication for you and I'd sort them out. So after a while, I left that company. So there's a client I used to have when I was in that company who asked me to help him out with his marketing communications and I did a very good job. He made a lot of money from what, what I did for him. And he called me up and said, you know, do you charge for this kind of service? I told him, no, it's just a hobby, it's okay, no big deal. He wrote me a check in the name Linda Communications and told me, go bank that check, go register the company, and just you're doing a very good job, you need to get paid for it. And then I was just at home babysitting. So that's how it started, that's how the business started. And from then I've now looked back. High points and low points of your venture. A client called me and uh, not the same client who had, uh, this client is in Meru, it's Meru University, and I had sent her her banners, her brochures, and I'd done it in three days, <laughs> and it was very high quality, and I'd done a job that was so good before, and she called me, and she was so happy, and she was like, Linda, I totally appreciate your work, I love it to death, I'll never use anyone else, and it's interesting that even though sometimes I disappoint them, I can't go to anyone else. So that means they, they give me the business, not because cause it's me, it's just me. I do a good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a really high point for me. <laughs> um, I have a problem with managing my staff, <laughs> my employees, because I have a certain standard I want to maintain, and it's very difficult to train them to that standard. I'm not a very patient person. Okay, I am patient when I'm drawing, but I'm not very patient when it comes to explaining things to people. So I had, uh, I have a really big problem with um, employing people. And I guess in business, you always have your highs and your lows. So I'm sort of sorting that out right now because I'm getting trainers in to come and train people, train my employees for me because obviously I'm not doing a good job because I can keep firing and hiring and firing and hiring, which is not good. What is your hiring policy? Someone with art direction, someone who is an artist, he has to be an artist first, a creative. 
then he he or she has to be a marketer as well. There's no way I can hire someone who has no marketing skills. Um, okay, it has to be driven to make money. It's it's very important to have someone who knows that the shillings also matter. You know, creatives have a problem. <laughs> we enjoy our work so much we forget that money is also we need to eat, we need to drink, we need to sleep. So I also need someone who, who knows that it's, it's, we need to make money. Okay. How do you balance work and personal life? Sometimes it gets really busy, really, really busy. Then my personal life suffers a lot. Uh, but sometimes, like now, it's not busy at all. People are not advertising. But come next month, you'll find a lot of people want to advertise because of August and stuff. So how I manage it is there's a time to work, there's a time to play. Um, there's a time the work is really important so you can't really play. I don't know, my work is my life basically. I enjoy my work so much. It just, I guess it manages itself. What are your future plans? If I can get state house as a client, yes. <laughs> Then there, I think I've made it. Um, as well, I, I want to be able to be given a, an award for my art. I want people to appreciate my art because it's very important to me. I love, I just love drawing and doing stuff. Um, and I want to be able to help others, as creatives especially, get out of their small cocoon and actually get out there and get their art appreciated. That for me would make a lot of sense.